use cases for chat GPT, which is, you know, OpenAI's new iteration of basically GPT-3, which is now 3.5. Just like life in general, you know, like it's easy and great whenever we find tools that make life in general easier, not just marketing. So if you're like me and you like that as well, <laughs> use this tool for recipes. Oh my gosh. We are huge foodies. I cook every single day. We actually have a farm where we live. We grow our own food. So cooking is like kind of a stress relief for me. I love doing it. So one thing I hate is scrolling through all the ads, the life stories, you know, all the content you don't need <laughs> when you're trying to get to a really short recipe. So if you have this tool, write a recipe, it's amazing. And one way I did it is I just, you know, what's thawed in the fridge. We had shrimp thawed. Okay. Let's write a recipe for shrimp. I have tested this every night this week. And every time I cook a recipe that was written by AI, it turns out amazing. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. In fact, in the blog that went out on my site this today, where we studied this, we quoted 15 different experts. Some of the people are you guys in the blueprint. Um, but in this, I was sharing some pictures of the recipes because they're it's just so good. And you get to save so much annoying scroll time, which I really love that. So anyway, that's just a life hack for, <laughs> for how to use it. And Janet, I know you've used it a lot. Have you tried it for recipes? No, but that's a great idea because I agree with you. When you do look for a recipe, you get all the ads and there's just, it, it's ugly. You just got to find the, the, the print recipe section, but this is perfect for that. Yes, it really is. And what I did, I put it in my notes, you know, which corresponds if you're on a Mac and an iPhone, those two things can sync. So I'll just paste it from my computer over to my notes. And then I'm reading it from my notes. And I also did screenshots. And it's like your phone times out less <laughs> versus when you're on like a browser. So the whole experience was just 10 times better having a recipe that was written by AI. And I'm just like, I'll probably never go back to scrolling through somebody's food blog. I just probably won't because it's so much simpler and easier. And I think this is a good use case for it because, you know, what I've seen so far with chat GPT is it's really good at pulling together things that already work. And if you think about it, that's what a recipe is. Like there's flavors, there's spices, there's ingredients that work, and then there's ingredients that don't work. So like for me, somebody who has cooked every night for the past, gosh, two years, <laughs> when COVID happened, that was a big life change. We just started cooking at home, never stopped. So like I know from cooking that turmeric, cumin, paprika, those things go together. So that's why whenever I saw AI writing a recipe, I was like, okay, this is a really good use case. Um, because the thing that AI isn't good at really is reinventing the wheel or being original. So in a recipe, you're not super original I mean, you're putting together things that already work. Um, so anyway, moving on from how to use it just to make life simpler, which is recipes. I think food bloggers, you know, I do think there's going to be a big shift just because I will never use a food blog again. Like <laughs> it's just so much simpler. So that's an interesting, it'll be interesting to watch that space, you know, and sites that are built off of the backs of recipe content. So I think there might be a shelf life happening soon there. But with content strategy, I think that this also has a place. I've asked it to create topics in my style. I've asked it to create topics. It doesn't seem to really know my style. Like the difference isn't really there. If I say plan 10 topics on content marketing in Julia McCoy's style. So if I leave out in Julia McCoy's style, there's really no difference. So it's hard to tell if it even knows that style. However, I have seen that work for other people. It seems to know their style sometimes. So you could try it. You know, I have a lot of content published online, so you would think <laughs> it would know my style, but it was interesting that there was no difference. But the topics that it generated, I wouldn't just run with these. You know, I wouldn't put them on our calendar um, because we really don't just create topics that are already hashed a bunch of times. We create topics based on data. So what's going to rank in the top of Google and what is a really hot topic right now in the industry? And then, you know, we try to make it evergreen. Like we don't add dates to the titles. So the topics generated, I wouldn't run with as is, but I would definitely use these to inspire what direction I could take for the calendar. And I'll show you a quick look at our calendar so you can kind of see the difference. Because 
<laughs> our topics don't look like that at all you know it's these are very generalized <coughs> like the importance of creating a content marketing strategy, how to conduct keyword research. You know, there's no like 10 steps or the step-by-step -step guide to SEO content marketing, which is more along the lines of what we create. You know, we create very specific types of titles you can see. So again, like I would never just use that topic list and run with it. I would make it better, but it's a great place to go from like versus the blank slate of oh, okay, what do I talk about this month you know <laughs> and for me I have a keyword research tool open at all times but just getting that idea the idea is great so that was a good use case for it and then the other one that I thought was interesting however I have more thoughts on it based on some results this morning I was analyzing was short form content so again if you think about it right what's chat GPT good at what's GPT 3.5 in general good at it's good at pulling things that already exist together in a well-written way like in some ways you know I've heard it said by some top experts that are studying the technology space and they're saying that this will replace 90 percent of content writers that are writing generalized content content. And in some ways I agree with that. In some ways I don't. But the reason I agree with that is because the writing itself is actually pretty good. The sentence structure is good. Now there's some fluff. Don't get me started on that. Uh, so that's not good. <clears throat> but the actual writing, you know, if a college professor was to pick this apart, there's good writing here. There's good flow. And I think that's a big step forward in AI as a whole in GPT-3 as a whole. Um, so I had it write 10 tweets and that's that's like all I gave it, right? 10 tweets about content marketing in Julia McCoy style. Again, like that didn't make a difference if I left that off or if I added it, there really wasn't any difference. Um, it didn't seem to know my style despite me publishing, you know, thousands of articles. So what it came up with was very generalized stuff. However, you know, if you think about it, there are audience levels that can benefit from the reminders about something general. Like for example, one of the tweets I liked that it wrote was this remember content marketing is a marathon not a sprint keep creating valuable engaging content and you will see the results over time and i don't really love these hashtags i would just hashtag content marketing um i wouldn't you know hashtag a whole three words so it was there was some limitation there but whenever i actually went to twitter and posted these on my twitter account i had like no engagement <laughs> i don't know why i think it's because of how generalized they are and i was getting more engagement on humanly written tweets so that was interesting and i shared that here my lowest engagement tweets this week were written by gpt so interestingly enough there's been a lot of different agency owners exploring this in ads. So they're doing short form ad content, ad copy with GPT 3.5 chat GPT. And what they're seeing is humanly written content has a much better ROI. You pay a lot less per lead. So I just think like there's a human element there that's hard to quantify. And when it's missing, other people know, even subconsciously, you know, and that was hard to quantify. Um, so while these tweets were well, uh, well written, they didn't really perform that good. And another limitation I found is it really didn't understand writing for other platforms. So if I was like, write this as an Instagram caption, it just spit out the same content. You know, it's really important <laughs> if you're doing social media marketing, marketing, you understand the difference in platforms. You cannot just copy and paste captions across platforms. You need to customize them for the platform. So an Instagram caption, you know, could benefit from some more structure. So didn't happen. <laughs> I also tested it for meta descriptions. I know, Janet, you were talking about this in the thread and I didn't really find it that successful, which was surprising because meta descriptions, I think are somewhat easy. However, you know, you still want to get like, for me, whenever I'm publishing content, I don't really want to just get a 1% click through. I want to get the best possible that we can. You know, we have a welcome email sequence getting almost 60% open rates. Like that's possible. The qualifying factor is content. Content is your ingredient to make that happen. That open rate, that click-through rate, all those things, right? So if your content's really good, 
it is the ingredient that makes that shift happen successful or not so what i found and i tested it a bunch of different ways you know we had an article on 10 ways to build a linkedin following that we were getting ready to submit to a big publication so i was like okay can this thing write me a meta for this and i asked it to write me a meta in like five different ways and it just couldn't it was having so much trouble um so finally i did this summarized this article in just two sentences and this is good like you can take a piece of this and put it into a meta description and Jana, sorry to keep calling you out but i know you've been doing this yeah. i'd love to know if you had more success doing a meta you know just to your point at in testing there's i have found some very sort of generic or stuff that you would you, you see evergreen for the last you know decade plus and that's already in the internet um but mm. what i would do is more for ideation like what you see and people also ask throw that into chat gpt to see like how it answers that particular question um but i think just like seo where you know way back in the mid 2000s when i would have people say just automate seo you still need human intervention and and it's the same thing with writing i think when with regards to this i think we still need to have a human um preferably an actual writer take their own point of view and add that in that I don't think we can get from um, from automation in this way. Yes, that's what I was finding, you know, over and over again when testing it. Definitely, you know, it's really hard to replace a human writer. And I'm going to continue to show you that. So <laughs> we got like some really good use cases to show that. So other uses, I thought that this was pretty smart um, from somebody that invests in AI that advises on these softwares and platforms. If you want to follow her, it's Ali K. Miller on LinkedIn. So she was like, you know, ways to use chat GPT. You can actually do it, use it in coding. That was interesting. You know, I've researched that someone had it write code for a WordPress plugin and the code was halfway correct, halfway not. I really don't think it'll replace developers anytime soon. Um, but planning, yes, definitely. Creative questions. I'm still testing that. I really like the ideas that can spark when you just ask it creative open-ended questions. You know, it can actually get like, your brain flowing in unique ways. Um, writer's block, you know, I have to say, if I was to pick a bone, it was it would be with that point because when you are a specialist, you've built up, let's say, you know, more than five years of experience, maybe 10 years, then I actually think that using AI to start a piece of content is detrimental because you're looking at something that replaces a blank slate, but the thing that replaces that blank slate was written by a bot. And I don't think that's the best way to start an article. So, you know, I think it helps for newbies. Like if you're completely new to writing, if that's not your forte, then yes, it can definitely definitely help. But if you're a specialist writing on an expert topic, I think that using GPT 3.5 to replace the blank slate could actually do you more harm than good because you're looking at things that are not your own unique ideas. You're looking at things that are, you know, what this tool is good at is regurgitating things in a well-written way. So that's not so good if you're wanting to be original and create stuff that really matters. So that would be the one I would pick a pick a fight with <laughs> is the writer's block. You know, I think it helps new writers, but experienced experts that really have something to say, I don't think they should be touching that tool if they want to replace the blank slate. You really have to start at the blank slate because if something that you want to use to build your authority isn't based on your ideas, then, you know, what is it based on? And people really see through that. You know, since 2020, uh, the number two reason why people buy is trust. Number one is price. Number two is trust. That was a study across 30,000 people in 11 continents. So with trust being one of the top two reasons why people buy, if you replace the blank slate with a bot that writes those ideas for you, I do think people see it. And it's really hard, again, to quantify that. And it's like, did you know this was written by a bot? People don't. But at the same time, it's almost like they do. They don't engage with it. There's a difference there.